portion of this video is brought to you by Surfshark. As good as lithium batteries are, they have their limitations and challenges, but there's also plenty of battery alternatives. Flow batteries alone have enough variations in chemistry to make your head spin. Zinc bromine batteries are one up and coming contender, and calling them up and coming sounds funny when you consider that they've been around for 137 years, but they might hold the future for energy storage. And for such an old idea, why now? I'm Matt Farrell, welcome to Undecided. It's no question that developing efficient energy storage systems will make or break our progress in the use of intermittent renewable energy. When it isn't sunny enough to rely on solar or windy enough to turn turbines, batteries full of previously generated renewable energy can keep the grids going. When it's bright and sunny or the wind is blowing, the opposite case is true. It can store excess energy for when it's needed most. Now, lithium ion batteries are the reigning champion in the chemical battery arena, but a 137 year old concept might be what knocks them out of the ring. And that's because the use of lithium based batteries is somewhat paradoxical in the quest for sustainable energy. They're great for electric vehicles, but recycling lithium ion batteries has historically been difficult and dangerous. But there are several companies working on that problem. The process of mining lithium is also hugely disruptive to the environment, requiring about 500,000 gallons of water for each metric ton produced. But again, there are also companies trying to fix that problem too. Despite this, lithium ion batteries continue to dominate the market due to their low cost and high energy density. Yet the price of lithium is rising. In China, one of the world's largest producers of lithium, the cost of battery grade carbonate lithium increased by more than 700% between early 2021 and February of 2022. That doesn't look so good in light of the ubiquity of lithium ion. Now, rising lithium prices also adds to the challenge of producing even more energy dense variations like lithium metal and solid state electrolyte batteries, which haven't even hit the market yet. There's a clear need to mitigate our reliance on lithium. And as the demand for EVs and renewable energy increases, alternative types of batteries are gaining traction. It feels like there's a new one every week, but in this case, it's an old one. Two Australian companies, Gion and Redflow, have stepped up to the plate with zinc bromine batteries that promise safer, more reliable, and more robust designs. In July, Redflow began productions of its third generation of its zinc bromine flow battery, the ZBM3, at its manufacturing plant in Thailand. In September, the company officially teamed up with Empower Energies to bring their 10 kilowatt hour battery to North America. That same month, Gion began producing Endure, its non-flow zinc bromide battery, using an existing lead acid battery factory in Sydney. So what is it that gives zinc bromine an edge over other types of battery chemistries? Well, before we discuss the value of zinc bromine batteries compared to their competitors, let's break down how they work. Because zinc bromine batteries are a form of redox flow battery or RFB. Now, like any kind of battery, RFBs contain a cathode, an anode, and a separator. What distinguishes flow batteries from others is their use of tanks full of a liquid electrolyte on either side of the battery one for a catholite and the other for an analyte, instead of the solid components that are found in batteries used today. Now, each side contains a chemical in a different oxidation state. A chamber between the two tanks holds a cell stack, which is divided by an ion selective membrane. When you discharge a flow battery, the chemical energy stored inside is converted to electrical energy through reduction oxidation, also known as redox. Now, the ions in the analyte oxidate or lose electrons. Now, these electrons then move through the battery circuit and pass the membrane. On the other side, ions in the cathalate take these electrons, reducing their oxidation state. As the battery charges, this process is reversed. The typical RFB structure of tanks and pumps translates into a lot of bulk, so they're most appropriate for stationary applications. Think storage for an EV charging station, not an EV battery. They're highly useful at home or grid scale because of the flexibility of the design. If you want more power, just add more stacks. If you want more storage capacity, add more electrolytes and storage tanks. Gel Ion takes things a step further because of their unique approach. Before getting to that, I'd like to thank today's sponsor, Surfshark, for sponsoring this portion of today's video. I always recommend using a VPN when using public Wi-Fi, but VPNs can be very useful even when you're at home. A lot of online services use some pretty sophisticated commercial tracking and machine learning to apply very targeted advertising, and a VPN can protect you from some of that. Now, Surfshark's clean web does a great job blocking ads, trackers, and malicious websites, making it safer to use the internet even at home. And you can even make it look like your IP address is coming from a completely different country. This can come in handy if you want to stream a video that's only available from a specific location. And one of the best parts of Surfshark is that it's easy to set up on all of your devices, whether that's iPhone or Android, Mac or PC. Surfshark is the only VPN to offer one account to use with an unlimited number of devices. Use my code to get 85% off plus three extra months for free. Surfshark offers a 30 day money back guarantee, so there's no risk to try it out for yourself. Links in the description below, and thanks to Surfshark and to all of you for supporting the channel. Now back to Jion. Gelion takes things a step further because their battery, the Endure, isn't an RFB. 
Instead, it uses the same plate format and style of casing as a lead acid battery. The difference is that it swaps lead and sulfuric acid for a bromine positive plate and a zinc negative plate, with a layer of gel acting as the electrode in the middle. The gel in Gion refers to the gel-based rather than the liquid-based electrolytes. This means that unlike RFBs, the Endura doesn't use pumps or tanks, allowing for a much more compact design. The plate design not only saves space, but eliminates the need for specialized maintenance, an auxiliary power supply, and secondary backup system. Now, the chemical reaction inside, though, remains the same. When the battery charges, zinc ions move to the negative electrode, accept electrons, and reduce to zinc. Bromide ions move to the positive electrode, lose electrons, and oxidizes to bromine. The reverse happens upon discharge. A major benefit of flow batteries and the Endure is their depth of discharge. It's possible to discharge flow batteries, including those produced by Red Flow, all the way down to zero without damaging them. In contrast, some forms of lithium ion batteries have an inherent limitation on their capacity because they tend to degrade when they're discharged to below 20%. RFBs also have a crucial advantage over lithium ion when it comes to safety. Lithium ion batteries require careful management to avoid failures that can spell disaster. When mishandled, damaged, or overheated, they're prone to thermal runaway, which can cause fires. And they're also well known for exploding. Fires caused by lithium ion batteries are especially dangerous because they're difficult to put out and can even reignite. And to put this in perspective, last year a Tesla lithium ion battery pack caught fire during testing at the Victoria Big Battery in Australia. It burned for three days. Another Tesla Mega Pack energy storage system, this time in California, caught fire last September. Like the fire in Australia, nearby residents were warned to shut their windows to protect themselves from smoke, which is full of toxic gases. Now, I don't call it Tesla because it's their problem. It's just a lithium ion battery problem that some technologies have. Now, while these events are rare and lithium ion batteries are generally very safe, when things go wrong, there are serious safety concerns. Flow batteries solve this problem by using non flammable elements and water based electrolytes rather than the organic ones. This greatly reduces the chance of fire. As of right now, vanadium redox flow batteries are the most popular, but there's no shortage of chemistries to choose from, like all iron, uranium, or even copper. That said, zinc bromine is probably the oldest of the bunch by a wide margin. The concept of zinc bromine batteries was first patented by a New Yorker named C.S. Bradley all the way back in 1885. So why are they relevant now? Well, for one, the incredible simplicity. Another is that bromine is a natural fire retardant, an appealing quality when considering the instability of some lithium chemistries. Gion claims that its bromine gel can substantially moderate or even extinguish a fire. Still, other flow batteries also provide a low fire risk, with vanadium also having a leg up in its unique qualities. Vanadium can exist in multiple oxidation states, and a study published by the U.S. Department of Energy notes that vanadium redox flow batteries have virtually an unlimited cycle life. We actually covered a new vanadium redox flow battery chemistry in a recent video if you want to see it. I'll put a link in the description. Even so, for all its usefulness, vanadium comes with its own set of weaknesses. Cost is the big one. The metal itself, which is mostly used to strengthen and toughen steel alloys, is known for its price volatility. In contrast, the components of zinc bromine batteries are significantly cheaper. Most of the Earth's bromine is found in ocean water, so we're literally swimming in it. It's easy to see how big of a difference that makes. A 2017 study estimated that chemical cost of storage for a vanadium redox flow battery is about $124 per kilowatt hour. That's about 15 and a half times more expensive than the cost of a zinc bromine system at $8 per kilowatt hour. More recently, a 2021 study examined the materials cost associated with vanadium, zinc bromine, and all iron batteries. Among the three, zinc bromine batteries won out as the cheapest at $153 per kilowatt hour, which is far lower than vanadium's $491. Researchers also investigated the impacts of each type of battery on human and environmental health revealing another issue with vanadium redox flow batteries, and that's toxicity. Vanadium oxides are highly toxic, and as a result, vanadium production involves a higher potential for human health hazards relative to zinc bromide. Vanadium is also dissolved in sulfuric acid, which is corrosive and hazardous to both people and the environment. But just to call this out, all those issues can be addressed through proper engineering, design, and maintenance. The results don't mean that zinc bromine gets off scot-free from a safety perspective. Bromine still poses a risk to human health in electrolyte form due to its carcinogenic nature. Nevertheless, Sandia National Laboratories argues that the chemical reactivity and evaporation rate of the bromine contained in an electrolyte is much lower than pure bromine, and that the chemical smells so bad that a spill would be noticed pretty quickly. Sure, zinc bromine may beat vanadium in terms of cost and relative environmental impact, but does it stink in comparison to lithium ion? Well, to be clear, zinc bromine batteries are definitely not as energy dense. On a grid scale, Giant's batteries have an energy density of about 120 watt hours per kilogram. And Redflow's system integration architect, Simon Hackett, 
explained in a 2021 presentation that the company's batteries are more energy dense than lead acid, but less energy dense than lithium. When it comes to round trip efficiency though, zinc bromine batteries can potentially compete with lithium ion. Giant Ion's Endure battery has a round trip efficiency of about 85 to 90%, and that's very comparable to the 82 to 90% range for lithium ion batteries. That study, which addressed the cost and performance of grid energy storage tech, also points to the ways in which that zinc bromine batteries can be less expensive than either lithium ion or vanadium. In the case of a 10 megawatt battery storing energy for four hours, lithium ion batteries are the cheapest when considering things like the storage block itself, which includes the cost of the battery modules, racks, flow battery stacks, electrolyte, and tanks. Their HVAC and pipe systems are also cheaper. However, both Gion and Redflow claim that their zinc bromine batteries don't require air conditioning in the first place. Gion's founder, Thomas Maschmeyer, told The Guardian in 2021 that he predicted that their cost of operation would be 25% less than lithium's precisely because their batteries don't require air conditioning or fire suppression systems. On top of that, the Endure battery doesn't use tanks either, and there's no fluid to hold. As for the cost of system integration, which involves shipping and installing the batteries, the Department of Energy figures for lithium and vanadium, it ranges between $46 to $52 per kilowatt hour. Now, the cost of zinc bromine is between $10 and $18 per kilowatt hour. And in other aspects, like the cost of engineering, construction equipment, connecting to the grid, and transformers, zinc bromine is also considerably cheaper. Gion claims that its approach to manufacturing also drives the cost down further. Typically, an RFB requires a new production line, but the Endura's casing is the same kind used in lead acid batteries. And 18 out of the 22 steps of its manufacturing process can be completed within an existing lead acid battery factory. In a presentation given to investors earlier this year, Geoion estimated that it would cost about $16 million to retrofit a lead acid battery facility to produce one gigawatt hour of their batteries. While building a new one gigawatt hour lithium ion battery facility from scratch would cost about $130 million. Zinc bromine batteries also last longer than lithium ones. That's partially because of their durability and their depth of discharge as with other flow batteries. It's also the case with the context of their life cycle. Department of Energy statistics indicate that lithium phosphate batteries last for roughly 2,400 cycles, with lithium nickel manganese cobalt batteries lasting for about 1,500 cycles. Now, in contrast, zinc bromine flow batteries last for closer to 4,500 cycles, and zinc bromine non-flow batteries last about 5,000 cycles. Both Gion and Redflow also emphasize the toughness of their batteries. Gion calls the Endure abuse tolerant and in one test managed to keep it operating even as it was smoking and charring on top of a hot plate heated to 700 degrees Celsius. The two products boast similar levels of tolerance to high temperatures, with the Endura's upper limit being about 50 degrees Celsius and the ZBM3s being about 45 degrees Celsius. It seems that as far as design improvements go, zinc bromine batteries are on fire. And considering Australia's bushfires and overall hot climate, the country's relationship to zinc bromine batteries makes perfect sense. In fact, the blackouts that Australians experience as a consequence of bushfires are what prompted Australian state and federal governments to invest in using rechargeable batteries for residential battery energy storage systems and at remote telecommunications stations. Redflow's battery is especially poised for use at telecom stations because of its small size relative to other flow batteries, according to the company's system integration architect. Once zinc bromine batteries reach their end of lives, they're also easier to recycle than lithium-based batteries as well. And because the Endura's casing is the same as a lead acid battery's casing, it can be recycled in the same way, but with the added advantage of what the company calls more benign components, as in non-toxic lead or corrosive sulfuric acid. But zinc bromine batteries aren't perfect. In general, zinc bromine batteries face the risk of zinc dendrite formation, which can threaten to poke through the battery separator. As a result, zinc bromine RFBs usually require maintenance in the form of strip cycles to remove zinc buildup. It's worth mentioning though that Redflow claims that completely discharging its batteries strips the zinc away. And Gion's answer to dendrites is a porous membrane separating the zinc and bromide that eventually inhibits their growth. But like any other technology, zinc bromine batteries are not the end all be all. They're tailored to a specific purpose, large scale grids, long-term storage, rural areas, and extreme conditions. It doesn't make sense to compare them to something like a solid state battery, for example, because they're meant to solve different problems. Solid state batteries are thin and small. Zinc bromine batteries are relatively big and heavy. Solid states are generating buzz for their potential use in EVs, and zinc bromine batteries, on the other hand, are meant for providing electricity to your home, solar or wind farms, or remote areas. Overall, zinc bromine batteries may work well for fixed locations, but will be far too bulky for mobile or portable uses. Perhaps the most critical difference, though, is that production of solid state batteries is still on the expensive side and not being adopted into EVs and consumer electronics yet. And zinc bromine batteries are already here. 
So you still undecided? Do you think that zinc bromine batteries will gain ground and become a big player in the energy storage industry? Jump in the comments and let me know. And be sure to check out my follow-up podcast, Still To Be Determined, where we'll be discussing some of your feedback. If you like this video, be sure to check out one of the ones over here. And thanks to all of my patrons for your continued support and making these videos possible. And thanks to all of you for watching. I'll see you in the next one.